Welcome back. The last time we were together, I showed you how you could roll out your slab, place the slab on a covered paper platter form, and we left our, our slabs uncovered overnight in the cabinet to get leather hard. Now, mine is leather hard. I'm going to go ahead and peel it off because it's probably a little stuck to the plastic. There we go. And I'll set it right there. So this is looking good. Leather hard means it definitely has its shape. It's retaining its shape. And it's, uh, it should, when you look at it, it should not be terribly wavy or anything. It should be a nice, uh, clean looking form as far as the, the shape of the edges and everything. The paper platters, I will save because I reuse them. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you how you're going to take this and clean it up and transform it into something like this. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cleaning off the edges, uh, rounding the edges, and then adding my design. Now you will see that on this particular platter, the design is carved. The purpose of the carved lines is it will prevent the glaze from running together. What we want to do is we want to have a line carved wherever we're going to have two glazes meet. We are then going to be putting underglaze in the carved lines, and then when we apply the glaze on either side, it won't run together. If you didn't have the carved lines and you had glaze, touch a glaze, they would run during firing, just like a wet watercolor paint would run together if wet touches wet glaze will do that during firing. Now, before we begin on our design, you guys have all received the um, slab platter uh, design sheet. You want to come up with some ideas that are strong that you really like. If you would like to include a border on yours, that's what a couple of those are with the darkened, darkened areas. That's to include a border of some sort. And then you're going to take your favorite and you're going to blow it up big on the back. Now, Let's go ahead and we'll clean up the edge. I'll show you how we're going to do that. I'm going to start off by looking straight down from up above. And I want to look to see if I have any, any irregular uh, shapes along the edge, such as do I have any corners or funny places that are sticking out. And I'm just going to come in here with a sure form. And I'm going to, first of all, just kind of take those down, any areas that might be sticking out kind of strangely. I just want to clean that up. good from up above, then what I want to do is I'm going to want to flip it over. But if I flip it over directly on the metal, I'm probably going to damage my interior. I'll probably get some lines on there. So what I'd like to do first is I'd like to place a fabric towel over it just to add a little layer of cushion and protection. So what I'm going to do now is I just want to check the back side to see if I have any irregular little edges that are sticking up and I can just rib those sorts of things off. Okay. Now that I've cleaned up the back edge and the front edge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little uh, notched card. We used these previously on the cups, and I'm just going to clean up the edge and give it kind of a nice round little uh, contour. This is also compressing the edge, so in addition to kind of cleaning it up and shaving it away, it's definitely going to make it a little bit stronger on the edge and a little less prone to cracking. Okay, the exterior of it is looking rather nice now. Now I'm just going to come in here before I do my design and I'm just going to kind of tidy up the rim. I do want a little bit of a flange on this particular plate so I'm just going to tidy that up and kind of get my, my uh, flange uh, a little bit more defined. Alright, 
Now I'm ready to go ahead and start transferring my design. I'm just going to do a large floral design for this one. Um, if you would like to do, say, something like on this one, where I have the border in there, I used a little paper template, and I placed it on, and I traced it. I do want you to notice the size difference between the uh, original and the final. It, they do shrink considerably. So if you want to use a border like this, what you would do is you would just go in there and trace around it, and then you'll have a nice relatively even edge. I am not going to use the border on this one however. Instead I am going to have my design just kind of overlap and uh, move outward off the edges. Now a few things that you might want to know. In addition to using uh, say pre-made templates you can have some templates that are commercially made that I have over in the uh, drafting tool drawer. I have templates like this and of many various sizes. I also have this great tool. This is called a flexible curve. If you hypothetically wanted to have a curve and you wanted to repeat that line a few times, you can just put it on there and move it over and you can repeat that curve. So the flexible curve is a nice little tool. And of course you can use straight edges. Rulers or the edges of templates work really well too. I am going to go ahead and start off with the center of my flower. And for this I'm just going to use a template to trace. And you can really use anything. If you have any objects around that you want to use to trace, anything will work. I'm just going to start out with a nice, nice little template there. And I am just going to kind of uh, wing it based on my, my loose sketch there. So I am just going to come along in here and I am going to allow the flower petals to really extend out and off my plate. I have my design laid out now. I have it lightly drawn on there. I drew it on with a pencil. You could use any, any tool at all that you want to to draw it on with. But now that I have it lightly drawn, now I'm ready to make it a little bit deeper. Now the carving is typically done with the mini ribbon tools. You can use uh, another tool, like if I wanted to use this tool, that would certainly work. But I really like the mini ribbon tools because when you use these, you will actually be removing the clay. You're not going to leave a little burr so much um, as if you just pushed it up with another sort of tool. So in this case, I'm just going to use the tip of the mini ribbon tool that I'm using the triangle tip. And I am just going to make my lines. Of course, I don't want to go so deeply that I would uh, compromise the integrity of the slab. I want it to be still nice and strong. And this, I am uh, really just kind of being rather loose with this. So if I'm not directly on my original lines, I'm not terribly concerned about it because it is a flower. And flowers are organic. and are all a little bit different, so it does not have to be real precise and geometric. One thing I think I should mention is when you carve, you want to be very careful not to put any weight on the rim. So I'm holding my arm up above the rim to prevent putting any weight on it. Because if you rest your hand or your arm right on the rim, you could easily cause uh, a little bit too much pressure and you could crack your piece. And it's very hard to fix once you have cracked the rim of a nice big platter like this. And you especially don't want to do it at the end. You're going to have to use caution the whole time that you're working so you don't flex or bend these and that you don't put unequal pressure on them.
All right, once you have the design carved, then you wanna come in here and you want to clean. You wanna look for any areas where maybe you have debris that's stuck down in a groove and you can lift it out. Uh, you of course can take a dry paintbrush and dust out when you see things. But just go back in there and do any cleanup that you possibly can first. Okay, now that I have preliminary cleanup out of the way, now I really wanna look at the edges to see if I happen to have any burrs. If you have uh, edges where it's pushed up along the sides, you may need to clean off the burrs because a burr will actually prove to be a very sharp area after it's fired. So I'm going to come along in here. I like to use the round end of the loop tool. The round end helps to uh, prevent me from gouging it too much. And then after I have that done, then I'm going to come in here, dust it out again. It's very repetitive. Cleaning, dusting, cleaning, and then I'm going to use a smaller paintbrush with water on it, and I'm going to be cleaning up my carved lines. With water on the paintbrush, I'm going to just carefully go in the grooves. That's going to remove any last little bit of debris, and it'll smooth out any tool marks that I might have. We really want this carving to be super clean. Okay, I've now cleaned up all of my carved lines and the uh, cleaning of the front looks really good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be writing my name on the back, write your bell as well, and what we need to do is we do need to store this so it can dry evenly and stay flat. Now what I like to do is I will like to uh, place it upside down on a wear board. A very flat wear board is going to be necessary because we don't want it to warp. So for storage, going to very gently and carefully turn it upside down on a wear board. I'm going to make sure that it is nice and flat. When I look at it, I shouldn't see any of the edges popped up. And I'm going to let it dry slowly like this, upside down. When it's dry enough, I'll flip it over and I will load it into the kiln. And that's how you do the carving and cleaning of your slab platter.